Larry Howe Silver, the Lone Ranger. Companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! Hot sun beat down on the sides of Rock Canyon, throwing shimmering heat waves against three horses and their riders. One of the men was masked. The other was an Indian. Between the two rode a boy of 14. Suddenly, the masked man signaled a halt. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. What's the matter? Just a minute, Dan. Tonto, you hear anything? Ah. You hear a horse coming toward us? That's right. I thought no one ever used this trail. Grown over since the gold mines played out, Dan. Someone is using it now. Them see mask. Maybe think we outlaws. Well, we'll avoid a lot of questions if we get out of sight. That's right. We get off the trail. If we can get out of sight behind the brush. This way. Come on, Vic. Come on, boy. Easy. Hey, you go. Me cover open them. All right, Toto. This'll do, Dan. Horse will be easy. Oh, Victor. This mountain, hold your horse. Easy, big fellow. All right. Oh, Scott. Oh, father. Oh, oh father. Other fellow just beyond bend on trail. I see them. Two, three, three men and pack horses. Those men look like miners. I thought gold mining was a thing of the past in this section. So did I, Dan. Maybe not miners. Well, two of them are dressed like miners, and, and there's some digging tools on the horses. Oh, wait, Dan. I know who one of those men is. His name is Coulter. He's wanted by the law in Homer County. Oh, golly. Quiet. They're coming close. <laughs> with his two companions waited silent and motionless behind the brush which hid them from view of the two horsemen coming along the trail. The ranger, though unseen, could observe the approaching men and he took the opportunity to impress their appearance on his mind. One of the men was a heavy set, rough looking man, dressed in miner's clothes. The other was an elderly little man with all the earmarks of a meek tenderfoot. As the horseman came within earshot, the heavy set man called for a halt. Rain up here a minute, Meeker. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 there. Oh. Why are we stopping here, Mr. Colder? To give Bart and the pack horses a chance to catch up. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Do you think we'll reach Rim Rock before dark? Sure thing. What's the matter? Are you getting anxious? <laughs> I know it's foolish, but I can hardly wait to see the assay on the gold mine. Oh, I told you the ore showed a fine assay. Oh, it isn't that I doubt your word, Mr. Colder. Oh, I understand. You'll feel better when you get the word of an expert, huh? 
What are you laughing at, Colter? Our friend Mitra is anxious to see the essay. Oh. It seems too good to be true. I can't see why you're willing to let me buy part of your mine. Well, that's because we need an educated man like you for a partner, Meeker. Oh, it means so much to me for the sake of my son. It ain't your son that's buying into the mine, is it? Oh, no. I'm buying it, but it's for my son. I want to leave something worthwhile for him, you see. Money means nothing to me. Not now. You don't? Not since my wife died. Oh. Uh, where is your son? Well, he's in the east with my sister. He's in school. When we get the mine into production, I'll take a trip and visit him. Maybe we better shove on. Yeah. Oh, uh, just one thing we should warn you about, Meeker. Yes? We don't want the news of our mine to leak out. So you'd better not say anything about it when we get to Rimrock. Very well. Well, if we're going to get the essay report this evening, we'd better get going. Yep. Come on. Get, get up, up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Come on. As the three men rode away, the Lone Ranger motioned to Dan and Tonto to remain quiet until the riders were well out of earshot. Having recognized Coulter, the masked man knew his dealings with the man called Meeker were not above board. As he watched them ride away, he was already planning to find out more about the deal concerning the gold mine Coulter had mentioned. Finally, he turned to Tonto and spoke. Did you hear that, Tonto? Uh, there's no gold left around here. I wonder if Cooler's up to one of his old tricks. What kind of trick? Looks to me as though he's planning to sell a salted gold mine to that old man he called Meeker. Oh, golly, it'd be a shame to rob a fellow like that. Isn't there something we can do about it? Before we do anything else, Dan, I want to see that mine. How can we find it? We'll uh, follow their back trail. It may lead to the mine. I'm out up. Come on, Come on, prevailed upon the man in the assay office to work overtime so Meeker could see the value of the ore that had been brought from the mine. The old man paced the floor nervously. His had been a life of hardship. Every one of his 5,000 carefully saved dollars had been accumulated through privation and long hours of work. He couldn't believe that it was possible to increase wealth by the simple act of investing in a gold mine. I've heard about it happening. I know it's happened to other men, but somehow I can't believe such a thing had ever happened to me. Then Meeker stopped pacing. He saw the clerk approaching Coulter with a written report. He watched Coulter's face as he read the report. Then Coulter grinned. Just look at that report, Meeker. That mine will make us rich men, mighty rich men. Why, why, this, uh, this is even better than you said. Yep. Yeah. And I'm part owner. I can't believe it. It's like a dream. Just like a dream. Sure it is. All right. But assignment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there you are. I will go to the bank and get your cash. Yeah, the bank is open in the evening, isn't it? Sure. Come on. Thanks for waiting for us, Joe. You can close up whenever you want to. All right. Oh, there's Bart. Oh, sure enough. I, uh, I've got to tell him something. You walk on ahead, Meeker. I'll catch up to you. Very well. It's all set, Bart. Signed up all right? Sure thing. We're going to the bank and get his cash right now. Good. Is everything else all set? Yep. Boys are all ready for whenever you give the word. How about the supplies in the wagon? It's all set, including the blasting powder. We'll pass the word that we'll take Meeker to the mine first thing in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, there's easier ways to get cash out of a gold mine than digging out the gold, huh? <laughs> there sure is, Coulter. There sure is. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan reined up near the mouth of the tunnel of the end of the back trail. A dark shack stood at one side. And a guard sat in front of the fire beside it. They weren't expecting visitors. Otto, you work your way to the other side of the trail. Make the guard think you're trying to steal his horse. Ah, uh, me do it. Lead him away so Dan and I can examine this mine. Then circle back to the trail and wait for us. Ah, uh, come, Scout. Come, fella. Come. 
What do you expect to find here? I want to see what the ore looks like. The horse is getting uneasy. Tonto's getting near. The guard's horse knows it, huh? Yes. The guard doesn't notice anything yet. Wait. Tonto's got the horse. I don't keep him busy for a while. I can't see him anymore. Wait, Dan. Yes? I want to examine this. Want more light? I can see enough in the firelight. Is that gold ore? It's ore that came from that tunnel. Oh. Here's where Kohler and his friends fill their sight. Then this must be the stuff they're taking to town. Yes. Is it any good? It doesn't seem to be. But if they were going to have it a say... The old trick. <laughs> Look here, Dan. A shotgun shell. Sure enough. What do you mean, the old trick? Colder salted this ore. He put gold dust into the barrel of a loaded shotgun, then fired into this pile of ore. The ore he's taking to have a sade will be filled with specks of gold. That dirty crook. Now there's a double reason to get him. Before we turn him over to the law for the crimes in Homer County, we'll find out what else he's up to. How? You go back to camp and wait for me, Dan. I'll meet Toto. Then you'll come to camp? I'll be there later. Oh. After I meet Toto, I want to fix up a disguise. And I'll go into Rim Rock and ask Colder a few questions. He might be more willing to answer them if you were without a disguise, wearing that mask. Oh, I'll have to look around to find him. Couldn't very well do that wearing a mask. Get going, Dan. By the time the Lone Ranger had met Tonto and effected a disguise that would stand up under close scrutiny, the evening was well advanced. It was nearly midnight when two men entered the darkened lobby of the hotel and made their way up the stairs. On the second floor, there were closed doors on both sides of a long corridor. Each door bore a small card in which the name of the person occupying the room had been written. Colder. This is a tunnel. Ah. Maybe he must sleep. Someone is moving, lighting the lamp. Uh, who is it? Open the door, Coulter. I want to speak to you. Who in the step in? Hey, what's the Take idea? Take it easy. Take it easy. I want to talk about your gold mine. Who are you? Who's a redskin? How do you know about any gold mine? Did that critter talk? I came to ask the questions. It's a game, Colder. Why, I don't know what you mean. Uh, Team of Thumpy, your paper on table. Hey, give me them papers. Not so fast. Oh, you see here, that's my property. Oh. Partnership agreement, huh? You give me that. Get back. All right, all right. Keep an eye on him, Toto. Uh -huh. Me watch him. You're through, Colder. Meeker will have his eyes open when he sees an appraisal of the other ore in that worthless claim. Oh, so that's it, huh? You figured to bust up my deal with Meeker. Definitely. Oh, well, mister, you're too late. He's already signed the partnership, see? He's bought himself some land. I don't guarantee nothing. Where's the money he paid you? It's my money. Colter, how would you like to go back to Homer County? What, you... See if the cash is in his pocket, Tonto. Uh, Hold it, it, Stranger. You too, Injun. This time, my boy. Good work, Bart. Get their guns, boys. Drop them to the floor. That's it. Now, kick them over the corner. Well, you and the boys got here just in time, Bart. I'm my way up to sea and saw this hombre pushing your door in. Figured something was wrong, so I went after the boys. What's up? This hombre and his engine part was fixing to turn us over to the law. Yeah? Well, when I get through with them, they won't be able to turn us over. <laughs> us or anyone else. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto stumbled upon a scheme to murder for money. The Lone Ranger, unmasked but disguised, confronted Vince Coulter with his guilty plan. Then, suddenly, Coulter's men appeared with leveled guns. Don't try moving, stranger. What do you plan to do with this? You know too much, you and your engine, Fard. It ain't healthy. If you got anything to say, say it fast. Both of you. I don't aim to waste words or bullets. You can shoot us, Bart. Can, uh. I'll show you what I can. Look out, you little road maverick. Let me I'll take Vince. Look out for the engine. I'll get him. Get away with him. Tackle the stranger. Look out, Vince. Hello, run for it. Oh, you don't. Don't you get away, did you? I'll show you. I'll show you one another. Turn back, Bart. Yeah. Lucky this picture was handy. Two hombres sure put up a fight. Wouldn't have had a chance if it had let me plug him, Vince. Yeah, brought the whole town here. People don't pay much attention to scuffling, but a gunshot... Well, I thought you wanted... This armory was smart enough to know to ruin our plan. We can't afford to have folks busting in now. Ah, you're right. What are we going to do with these two? Nothing for the time being. They're out cold. Time and gag him. We'll put him in that old shack back in the hotel stable. And we're going through with the plan? Sure. We'll come back and deal with these two later on. Good enough. We'll take him in the shack. Come on. the night, one of Coulter's men kept close watch on the prisoners in the shack. At daybreak, Coulter rode away with his gang, including the guard. Then Tonto squirmed across the floor. He turned his back so his hands, though tightly tied, could reach the cloth that held a gag in the Lone Ranger's mouth. His fingers were numb and groping, but after a time, the gag was loose. That's it, Tonto. Now I'll, I'll do the same for you. The men reversed their positions, and the Indians' gag soon lay on the floor. The ropes, however, were tied in hard knots that resisted the Lone Ranger's effort. Hands are all thumbs. Uh, rope knot like bandana. Can't loosen it a bit. You hear that, Silver? Ah, uh, their knife and saddle. I wonder if Silver can get in. Door not strong. Hey, Silver! Come on, boy! Come on, Silver! Hear ya. Come on, Silver. Come on, boy. If Silver hit door with hopes to break. Come on, Silver. That's it, fella. Now, if I can get to my feet, at least see nice. One thing those crooks overlooked. There. Steady, boy. Steady, Silver. Now, reach a little higher. It'd be easy if my hands were tight in front. I have the knife. Oh, it won't take long. Turn this way, Toto. I'll have your ropes cut in no time. There. Not good. Help me take knife. Get my hands first. Not uh, good. Your hands free. That's it. I wonder if they left our guns in that room upstairs. We go see. I have feet free. I got another mask somewhere in the saddlebag. So wonder they didn't go through these bags. Super, maybe keep out of way. Probably. Here's the mask. Now, Kimosabe, let's get out of here and see what Kohler's doing. The Lone Ranger and Tonto dashed into the hotel and ran unnoticed up the back stairs to Vince Kohler's room where they retrieved their guns. A moment later, they were in the silence. Steady, big time. Monsieur! Oh. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode out of Rimrock toward the Rock Canyon Trail, Tart and his men waited tensely at the old mine shaft. Any sign of them yet? Nope. With the wagon they're traveling, then they'll be pretty slow anyways. Didn't plan to get here about noon. Are we waiting here for them or riding down to meet them at the foot of the trail? Yeah, which is it, Mark? Well, the way Vince plans it, we're to ride down the slope and meet them. Vince will ask us to unload the wagon part way. Then it'll get meager to drive the wagon uphill to the mine. <laughs> With the fuse lit on the powder keg behind him. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we just get him from ambush and be done with it? Well, this way it'll look like an accident in case anyone tries to investigate. And Meeker will never know what happened. Get 
getting kind of hot, Mr. Kohler. You think we'll get to the mine soon? Soon enough. It's a little slower driving this supply wagon. You said you wanted to help out. Oh, I do. Uh, I didn't mean to complain. Now that we're partners, I want to do my share, you know. I feel like everything I do is helping make my boy's future more secure. Yeah, yeah. Get up. Get up there. About you. I thought maybe you'd go back to the mine. No. Well, I went there, and there are some men watching those two miners we saw yesterday. The Easterner? Yes. I heard part of what they were saying. Quick, Dan. What was it? They they said something about putting in a fuse and a clay keg of blasting powder on a wagon and letting Mr. Meeker drive it up the last part of the trail. Blasting powder? Ah, it looked like a mining accident. Wagon tracks go along trail to mine. How much of a start have Kohler and Meeker? I passed them when I was coming down the trail to look for you. They must be nearly at the mine by now. Then there's no time to waste. We've got to ride fast. We want to save Meeker. Well, Silver, get on the line. Come A short time later, at the foot of the trail that led uphill to the mine. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Howdy. Glad you boys rode down to meet us. This wagon's too heavy loaded to make the grade, right? You mean we can't take it up to the mine? Oh, not as it is. Yeah, but it's changed a load a little. Get off your horses, boys, and help out. Right. What do you want us to do, Vince? Uh, may I help? <laughs> yeah, in just a minute, Meeker. We got something for you to do. Here, Red, let me a hand with them boxes. You sure. too, Bart. Take hold. Right. Plenty heavy. Yep. I could lift some. Oh, you stay on the wagon and hold the reins. We'll be ready to go in just a minute. And if you're so anxious to help, you can drive the wagon up to the mine. Drive the wagon? I'd be glad to. Red, help Mr. Meeker hold the horses. If I tell you to, let it go. Sure, boss. I hope I can manage the horses on this trail. You do all right, Meeker. All set, boss. Let him go, Red. Get up there! Get up there! Get up! The wagon bounced furiously in the rock-studded trail. The reins were torn from Meeker's hands. The little Easterner clung desperately to the wildly bouncing seat to avoid being pitched to sharp stone. Oh, there! Oh! Stop! At the bottom of the narrow trail, the schemers watched the jouncing wagon. Then their attention was diverted by a ringing cry. Oh, they saw a white horse and a masked rider charging t- toward the uphill trail. Faster, Silver! Faster! As the Lone Ranger swept past Porter and his friends, their guns whipped out. Astonished, too astonished to shoot accurately. The masked man dashed on up the hill. Every ounce of Silver's mighty strength was thrown into the fight to overtake the wagon that might explode at any moment. Meeker saw the masked man come alongside. He heard the masked man shouting. I've got to get you off! Meeker couldn't hear the word. Who torn me? The masked man shouted for drama with a furious pounding of hoofs and the thundering of wheels. Then the Lord Ranger leaned far out of the saddle. It seemed as though he must fall beneath the pounding hoofs of the runaway horses. Meeker closed his eyes. Then he opened them to see the masked man holding the reins, pulling back hard. Ho, oh, oh, ho, easy now, Penny. Ho, oh, easy, Penny. Penny, Silver, catch. Get off that wagon. You saved my life. Not yet, I haven't. Get off that wagon. Help me cut this team loose. But I There's can't. There's blasting powder in there. I, I know. There's a lighted fuse. It'll go off any minute. What? I want to cut the horses free. I'll help it. There, we'll start the wagon downhill. Get out of the way. I'll push it. There it goes. Is that wagon really going to explode? Yes, it is, Meeker. Well, they're planning to kill you, so he get back the stock he sold you. But I, I can't believe it. I saw several partnership agreements like the one you signed. You were to be the first of a number of victims. And to think I, I trusted them so much. Look. What? Down there, Colder and the others, they're trapped. Trapped? They can't get away from the wagon. They're blocked with the walls of the canyon. The wagon's almost on them. Sure saw their death trap come back at them. Meeker, your business partners are dead. 
Yes. Tyler, see if Mr. Meeker's cash is in Kohler's pocket. Ah, uh, me take a look. Meeker, according to the partnership agreement, you're the survivor entitled to everything. Uh, Tim Masabi. Yes. Here, plenty cash. Good. And that's the money I paid him. You'll get it back, Meeker. Did Colter try to kill me so as I couldn't share in the gold mine? There is no gold. He sold you worthless land. See, the assay was based on a sample of ore that had been shot full of gold dust. You were to be killed so you couldn't learn the truth. No gold mine? No. But there's a reward posted in Homer County for that dead man. He's wanted dead or alive. The reward is yours. No, no, it's yours. I already owe my life to you. I have no use for the reward, Meeker. You have. Steady, Silver. Wait here. I'll send men from town to take charge of things. But wait, I want to... Adios. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Come Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.